What is E equals mc squared? It is formally known as the mass energy equivalence equation. But what does that really mean? So this is an equation that you made. Okay. Have you seen this before? I have seen it before. Do you know uh, what the symbols here be? I used to in high school. But do you know like what these letters stand for or? Um, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. That is completely accurate. Congratulations. Do you recognize this then? Yeah. Do you know what these letters mean? Energy equals mass times speed of light? Yes, squared. Yeah, but yeah. Do you know uh, what this means? Or what yeah, it? this is energy equals mass times speed of light squared. Speed of light squared, absolutely correct. Good job. Do you know what the uh, symbols are or what they mean? Honestly, I forgot. It's been years. Do you know uh, like what this means? No, I never heard no. of uh, Do you know like what any of these terms might mean? I think energy. Energy. Do you know M what uh, Is it mass? Mass. See? This one stumps people a lot. No. See, it's a speed of light. It's kind of like not, not exactly intuitive, but yeah. So energy. It means that mass and energy are no longer two entirely separate things. They are one and the same with nothing but a simple scaling factor between them. It is also Albert Einstein's most famous equation, and most, if not all of us, are familiar with it. In fact, we encounter the equation so often that it has gained its own cultural significance as a symbol of physics itself. It's everywhere. We find it in popular media, such as television shows, artistic exhibits, and even bathroom stall graffiti. So, E equals mc squared certainly earns the title of Einstein's most famous equation. But do you know what it means? Or is it just a cluster of letters and numbers? What do you think? Hi, my name is Gerardo. Today I'm going to be deriving Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. Uh, so we're going to start out by saying that the force times the distance, the change in distance, is equal to the work, which is also equal to the change in energy. And then we're just going to multiply the velocity through, so we end up with the change in energy is equal to... Uh, velocity times mass times the change in velocity plus velocity squared times the change in mass. So at this point we're going to introduce relativistic mass. So that is the mass equal to the rest mass times the Lorentz factor which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So we can rewrite this as m is equal to the rest mass times 1 minus v square over c square to a negative 1 half. Since c squared is a constant, we can pull it out and be left with c squared. So we're just integrating the change in mass. So this is just m. And we can rewrite this as e equals mc squared. And that's it. Okay, thank you. What about Einstein? When someone says the word genius, or E equals mc squared, Einstein is usually the first person to come to mind. He possesses a cultural significance of his own. It 
would seem that almost everyone knows who Einstein is and knows that he came up with E equals MC squared. Cool. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question here. Do you right. know who this guy is right here? Yeah. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, that's correct. Do you know who this guy is here? Albert Einstein. Absolutely correct, Albert Einstein. You know your stuff. Einstein. Albert Einstein. Oh, she's quick. She's on top of it. Albert Einstein? That is Albert Einstein. Absolutely correct. Awesome. Albert Einstein. <laughs> you sure? Kind of looks like Charles Darwin. True. But you're right. It's, it's, it's Albert Einstein. Do you know who this person is? Albert Einstein. That's true. Here. That's Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Absolutely correct. Albert Einstein. Yeah, that's Einstein. Albert Einstein. Absolutely correct. But why else is he important? Albert Einstein was born in Germany in 1879. He was a curious inquirer all his life, questioning everything from the schools he attended as a child to nature itself. He was a natural scientist. When he was a child, learning to speak, he would whisper a sentence to himself to test it out, to make sure it was good enough to say aloud. Feeling alienated and different, he lived in his own mental universe, and that is where the magic happened. Unwilling to follow the existing rules of the world, he decided to rewrite the rules of the very universe. When he was 16, he performed a Gedanken experiment, or thought experiment, in which he rode on a beam of light. And by 10 years later, at age 26, these thought experiments had turned into some of the most influential papers published in our time. This was 1905 the year known as Anus Mirabilis, the miraculous year. Over the course of the year, he wrote four papers, three of which changed our universe forever. A paper on Brownian motion showed that atoms exist, a paper on the photoelectric effect showed that photons exist, and the final paper of the year, a paper on special relativity and the relationship between matter and energy, was the birth of E equals mc squared. By now, many of you are probably asking the question, why should I care? Or how does this affect me? As it turns out, there are many real world applications for the equation. Most of us are not aware of these small real life effects of the equation. But we are familiar with a much larger effect the equation had in the 20th century. Einstein's equation offered the potential for a tiny amount of mass to be converted into a huge amount of energy. And in 1945, the United States dropped two atomic bombs on Japan. According to Walter Isaacson, Einstein's only response when he heard the news was, oh my god. Although Einstein did not directly work on the bomb, Time magazine called him the father of the bomb and Newsweek called him the man who started it all. Einstein responded with shock and sorrow to the event, but while most of us are only familiar with the vast negative consequences of the equation, the future is much brighter. And the world is made of Coming from a past filled with destruction, we are entering into a future of construction and production. Instead of splitting atoms to destroy cities, we are fusing together their parts to power cities. Using the same energy creation process as the sun, nuclear fusion, the National Ignition Facility is generating an optimistic future for the energy demands of our civilization. Housed in Livermore National Laboratory in California, this is the world's biggest laser. It is attempting to create a small sun, 
by shining 192 high-power lasers onto a tiny speck of tritium, fusing atoms together in a flash of brilliant light. The fused atoms have less mass than when they started, and therefore release huge amounts of energy. Projects like these are the first steps in creating a sustainable energy source for our planet, finally unleashing the true power and the humanity of Einstein's E equals MC squared.